I'll share with you that what I feel right now is really weak with grief. Like weak and heavy with grief. And the majority of the day, that's what I feel. And then God starts talking to me again and leading me to study or directing my attention in a particular way so that I can understand another piece of the picture. And that's just what I keep feeling all day long. So he's bringing me back to Revelation 13. He's taught me so much about the Antichrist. I've taught you what I know, what he has taught me. If there's one book of the Bible that the body knows, that that we know better than any other book, it's Revelation. We know end times. So it does not surprise us when we look and see what's going on right now in this world and God is revealing this is what he's doing. Now here in Revelation 13, it talks about the Antichrist at the first half of the chapter. I'm going to focus on the second half of the chapter. This is where God has been drawing my attention over and over and over. And when I think I, I know or he's revealed something to me, and I, and I look at that thing that he's revealed, and I think, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I can't believe it's this clear. And then he brings me back, and he shows me something else. And I'm like, oh my goodness, he's showing me that too. It's so clear. And again, right now, he's showing me something else. So who knows how long this is going to go on, but he keeps bringing me back to these verses, 11 through 18. But like I said, he has to give this to me or, or teach this to me in pieces because I'm so weighed down. Well, also, it seems like he gives me, he, he teaches me a piece and then he makes me feel the weight of that piece. And then he brings me back to it. And then he makes me feel the weight of that piece. I just can't believe what's going on. But the, let's look at this together. There's a first beast that's talked about in the first half of the chapter. That beast is the Antichrist. It is the kingdom of counterfeit Christianity. Now it's going to talk about a second piece, but a second beast, excuse me. And at first glance, you're going to look at this chapter and you're going to think, okay, there's only two key players here. There's the Antichrist and then there's the false prophet, which is the second beast. But there's a third player. And that third player is actually the one who is executing judgment. That is the image of the first beast. It is the image of counterfeit Christianity. If we understand Christianity or we understand God's people to be Israel, and then the United States, the false prophet, fabricates an Israel, creates an image of Israel, then that is an image that is representing counterfeit Christianity, counterfeit Israel. God never referred to a land in the Middle East as Israel. His people have always been Israel. They are coveting and profaning the name that God has given us. Those who were descended from Israel were descended from Jacob. But Paul clarified that not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. He defined Israel again and again and again. Israel is defined in the word. But people who don't care about truth, who reject truth, they don't care about this. They refuse to acknowledge what God says about who Israel is to him. Then I saw a second beast, the false prophet, coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. That means that it looks like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, of the Antichrist on its behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. The only reason it's speaking that language is because counterfeit Christianity was begun with papal Rome, by papal Rome, and then it continued in the prostitutes that bore out of her, all those who continue in her prostitutions, even those who prostitute themselves to her, which includes counterfeit Judaism, calling their Hebrew calendar, calling their calendar a Hebrew calendar, and yet they prostituted God's calendar to the Gregorian calendar of the harlot Catholic Church of papal Rome, prostituting his Sabbaths to Saturday. What's Saturday? Saturday isn't in the Bible. So papal Rome, which began this kingdom of counterfeit Christianity, fell. It was brought down by Napoleon. And then the United States brought down communism 
which is what Napoleon instituted, atheistic communism. The United States brought that down. And the United States, as this false prophet, has been testifying to counterfeit Christianity ever since it became a global superpower, ever since it rose to power. How has it done that? It took down communism, but even before that, it has been creating this image of Israel. I did a video not that long ago, a few days ago, about how it created Netanyahu, the Frankenstein of Israel. The place God is bringing my attention to is here, verse 13. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, and then it's going to talk about how it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And we talked about what that image is. It is the image of Israel. Right now I want to talk about it performing great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of people. That represents judgment. And we've tried to understand what is this judgment? What does the judgment look like that it's bringing down? What it has done is waged war on what? What's the big narrative? What's the big enemy, guys? The two enemies in this narrative, in this counterfeit Christian narrative, have been communism and terrorism. Those are the enemies. Communism and terrorism. Communism because communism brought down that kingdom of counterfeit Christianity, brought down papal Rome the first time. Terrorism because Netanyahu made up a narrative that Israel, God's people, are being persecuted by terrorists when really they're the ones persecuting. They're the ones committing genocide. They're the ones distorting the word of God in order to claim some right that they have here to land. When the word says that God's people were driven from the land and they will not inherit the land until the Messiah comes back, but they won't listen to anybody who says that. They will not listen to them. In fact, they will silence them. And it says, because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Anyone feel like they're coming out of deception? Anyone feel like they're starting to realize this whole narrative that I grew up with regarding communism, regarding terrorists, is not true? That those claiming victim are actually the persecutors, are actually the ones who are committing evil in the name of God? It performed great signs even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of people. So it's waging war. It's bringing judgment. And this isn't just about war because you can see what's going on right now. You can see the narrative that's happening right now on college campuses with the protests. Oh, these are the terrorists. I see. These are the terrorists. They're the ones who are being tear gassed. They're the ones who are being punished. They're the terrorists. No one's allowed to say anything against Israel without fire coming down from heaven without judgment. And believe me, this is not righteous judgment just because it says fire coming down from heaven. That's not what it's saying. Has this been our war? Has this been America's war to go out there and fight terrorism? Because so-called terrorists wouldn't have even come after us if we weren't constantly defending and supplying counterfeit Israel with the bombs to kill their children. The United States has continued to testify to this evil. What other choice do they have? And so not only do we go to war, but we send the bombs to Israel so that they can go to war. We cause fire to come down from heaven and it deceives. This narrative deceives the inhabitants of the earth. And this false prophet orders them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it gives power to that image of the first beast so that the image can speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. So it's actually the image of that Antichrist, this counterfeit Israel that is actually going to persecute and kill God's people. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. So that was the last thing that I, or the, the previous thing that I talked about in another video, is how it is that it's causing people to receive that mark of the beast. And the heaviness that I feel right now is that I ever bought into this, 
that I was raised in it, that I'm being brought out of this deception. And, and, and that honestly is a reason for rejoicing and for gratitude. But the heaviness is about ever believing this and that I cannot convince anyone who does not have the eyes to see, who does not have the seal of God. I can't convince them to understand how we've been deceived, how we've been lied to. And you know why? The word tells us why. Because they don't love truth. They don't want to see it. They reject truth. And that's why God rejects them as his priests. This is the lie that we've been living in our, all our lives. That we made jokes about. Even as children, making jokes about Saddam Hussein. Making jokes about terrorists. That I hear counterfeit Christians making jokes about. As the blood is dripping out of their bloodthirsty mouths. Somehow thinking this is godly. This is what they support in the name of God. I'm so disgusted. And the other thing I feel heavy about is that the very people who were supposed to be set apart to be his people are the ones who full circle are carrying this out. They're the ones carrying this out while counterfeit Christianity cheers them on. I feel so heavy. I feel like I can hardly move. And the other thing that I feel heavy about is that People don't understand what time we're living in right now. I've been talking about this for years now. And now I can point to it and I can say, look, this is what I've been telling you. And even members of my own family, I can't make them see. I can't make them love truth. And I can see that they would rather make a liar out of God than accept the truth. Then return to him and he would return to them. And then they would know that this is what's going on. They would rather make a liar out of God. They would rather support these things in the name of God than know the truth, than admit that we are actually in the end, than admit that the things that I've been saying for the last over two years on this channel, but longer than I've been on the channel, they would rather justify themselves and claim that they have a little more time. It's not time to return to the Lord, right? Oh, it could be true, could be true. I feel sick over it. And I wonder, how many people are actually going to be saved? Like the same questions that the apostles were asking, is anyone going to be saved? How can anyone be saved? The question James was asking, will there be any faith left on the earth? I don't see it, you guys. I don't see it. God's going to have to do something to really shake things up if anyone's going to actually wake up. Do you see this, you guys? Do you see what's going on? Do you hear what I'm saying in Revelation 13? Or are you one of the ones saying, yeah, it could be true, could be true, it could be the time, but you do nothing about it? Because I know that that's the majority of you on this channel. Let's not, you know, let's not whitewash that wall. If you haven't contacted me to ask me about assembly, you're not trying to assemble with God's people. You're not making changes. You're not applying the things I'm saying. All you're doing is whitewashing a wall. You have to act. I don't speak this message so that you can strategize in your head about what you're going to do. I speak this message so you'll return to God and you're not contacting me. You're not wanting to understand what you need to do. Do I have another motive here? Is there some other agenda I have in having this channel and giving up my entire life to do this? If you don't go discern this with God, you will forsake your, you'll forsake your inheritance. You'll forsake your salvation. You'll forsake your eternity. Go and ask him about these things.